Hey there, Monster Gardeners. Today we're gonna to talk a little bit about mycorrhizae. I specifically chose these varieties that you see here. We do sell a lot of them um, based on the properties and what they're made of. There's been a lot of discussion recently uh, on the forums, online, everywhere really, about the difference between endo and ecto mycorrhizae. So ecto mycorrhizae, as the name implies, actually interacts with the outside of the root and is really only beneficial for woody plants and trees. It's never been shown beneficial for fruits or vegetables. Endo mycorrhizae, as the name implies, actually interacts with the inside follicle of the root and extends to the outside, actually extending its physical root mass through a symbiotic relationship in which the endomycorrhizae feeds the roots and the roots feed the mycorrhizae, expanding their area greatly and their water and nutrient uptake. Again, ectomycorrhizae sounds like it's a great idea to have all these different things going on, but it's never been shown beneficial to anything but woody plants. In fact, most of the time where you'll find it is around the base of pine trees. And if you ever see one topple over and you see that white moldy powdery looking stuff, that's actually ectomycorrhizae. That is where a lot of companies derive it from. Again, it's not something that your plant necessarily needs unless it is a woody plant, a tree, a bonsai, something like that. The most uh, dominant species of mycorrhizae is Glomulus intradisi. Anybody that knows anything about soil biology will tell you that it will dominate the rhyosphere and there'll be almost nothing left besides fungi after that. Which is why I like to use a product like VAM, which has Glomulus introduces and a number of other endo mycorrhizaes. Um, this is another good one that I like to use all the time, and this one has Rhizophagus introduces, which is also quite dominant and works really, really well at expanding root mass and uptaking nutrients. A product like Great White um, is a great product, don't get me wrong, but it has a lot of stuff in there that your plants can't necessarily use unless you're growing ornamentals, woody plants, geraniums, things like that. Um, so my personal choice would be one of the three behind it. They're a little less expensive because they have less of those exotic species. And again, anything with glomulus introduces in it is going to dominate that rhyosphere. A lot of people will try and use these as top dressing, but in order for it to actually work for you, it has to come in direct contact with your roots. So the best time to use a mycorrhizal product is always at transplant. So when you're transplanting up from your root plugs, or your Rockwell cubes or even Dixie cups or whatever it is when it's going into its next home, you're gonna to wanna to populate it with this stuff. Also extremely important that you're using dechlorinated or RO water when you use these products because chlorine is great for our municipal water system in that it sterilizes a number of bacteria. The problem is, is that it doesn't differentiate the good between the bad. It just wipes everything clean. So if you're using a product like this and just watering with say hose water or sink water without filtering it first, with something like a boogie brew filter or a stealth RO or something like that, then you're just wiping out that biology before it ever has a chance to take hold. Uh, also, little tip, using a uh, compost tea that's rich in products other than molasses, because molasses can smother these microbes, can help to feed them and help your garden grow as well. These products and many other exciting products are available exclusively at monstergardens.com. Thanks for tuning in.